Welcome back to my little shop on the prairie. In this week's video, we have a classic project, something that I haven't done for a while. And we're going to turn a bowl from this large blank. I cut this blank from Mulberry about two, I think, maybe two and a half years ago. And it has been lying in my closet for that time, drying out. There are a couple of small cracks, I hope they will turn away. You can see a couple of those here, one and two. And there are other problems plaguing this piece of wood. So I'm going to go over them right now for the novice turner. And if you're not interested in the information, I'm going to part on you in this part of the video. I'm going to put some text here at the bottom saying when is the time of the video when I start tur turning this. You can simply scroll forward in the video and watch only that part. So let's analyze this piece of wood for a moment. I can see over here something that looks like a crack, but in fact it's not a crack, it's a bark inclusion. And obviously if you see a bark inclusion in one side, you should better check the other side of the log to see where it leads. So turning this around, I can obviously see that the bark inclusion goes all the way to the other side and even more into the center of the bowl. This resolves for me a problem in deciding which face of the blank should be the bottom of the bowl. I will make this face the bottom of the bowl since this will be a narrower section of the bowl as compared to the other side. So I will turn the shape of the bowl in this direction. I hope you can see my hands moving and that way the conical shape of the bowl I hope will avoid the entire surface of the inclusion. If it's not we're just going to have to we're just going to have to uh, make sure that we're gluing the part as we go so hopefully I won't lose this entire chunk of wood on the lathe. So always keep it in mind that there's a piece here that is actually not fully connected, it is connected only by a couple of solid pieces of wood, but in any other way it is completely disconnected inside and it won't be stable. So that's one thing to consider. The other thing to consider is uh, the width of the blank. So if I switch it like this, you can see, let me focus, you can see that this blank is not really uh, parallel. If this is going to be the bottom, and I'm going to try to make it parallel to the camera like, like so, then the bottom is completely non-parallel. Here it's thin, here it's thick. We're talking about a difference of nine and a half centimeters versus 11 and a half centimeters. So there's a large inclination here that I will have to get rid of. Now I have two, two options uh, in my, at my disposal. You might have a bandsaw, a large bandsaw that you can run this through and square it off quite nicely, but I don't have a bandsaw. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, let me put this back down so I wouldn't have to hold it up. What I think I'll do is uh, take my chainsaw and try to square, it off, to square it off as best I can. It won't be easy. I'm not a really skilled uh, worker with a chainsaw, but I think I will be able to do enough damage to the piece of wood to get it as square as possible with those tools. Uh, the other option obviously is to square it off on the lathe, but since my lathe is quite weak and it's not very heavy, if I'll, mount, if I'll mount this piece as it is and try to square it, square it off while it's turning, it's going to uh, create a lot of chatter, it's going to uh, probably try to flip my lathe over, even though it is firmly bolted to the ground. My lathe has really flimsy legs and uh, the structure, I already know from experience, won't do the job. 
So I think we can start this off by going off camera and cutting as much as I can uh, from the shape to make it as round and square as possible before I will mount it on the lathe. I will probably mount it uh, the other way around once I'm, I'll am i finish squaring it off using a warm wood screw and of course using my tailstock as support because this is quite heavy. I would estimate around six or seven kilos so we're talking about 14 15 pounds piece of wood so i will use the warm wood screw i will use my tailstock as support and i will see uh, what i can do with this nice chunk of mulberry also we have to remember this mulberry at this point is quite dry uh, i don't know if it is dry all the way through to the center but it's going to be really hard on my tools. I will probably have to sharpen my tools a few times during the turning. Uh, mulberry, when dry, is really, really hard to turn. But uh, the plus side on this is it's going to take the finish really well. So without further ado, I'm going to go and chop this up and I'll be back with you right after the cutting. So this is a mid-turning breakdown of the bowl. As you can see, I've already given it the general shape that I would want to. Now turning most of the material off gave out some interesting results. First, as you can see, there are some points with rot here. I'm going to have to decide whether I would leave the rot inside or maybe try to pick it out and use some kind of filling. And obviously where the large piece broke, there is a large piece of rot right here that goes all the way into the bowl. So the extent of the rot will be more visible once we turn the inside of the bowl. I really like this part though. This is the part where the piece was. And I really wasn't aware that this part or this piece of wood originally had the pith in it so that's a nice surprise it's well dry now so i don't expect it to crack any further 
but there are some nice cracks here that would also might benefit from some kind of filling but I will have to turn the inside of the bowl first and and see what remains of this part if it will survive the turning the bark inclusion here is nice there's a nice bark inclusion here I might choose to fill it up or leave it as it is I'm also considering uh, as a finish for this bowl uh, to use some uh, spray lacquer lacquer uh, which would be the first time I would use this use this type of finish so that would be an interesting experiment but obviously that would be something that I will do right at the end of the project uh, I turned a tenon here a five centimeters two inch tenon which will fit into my jaws and at this point I think that I'm happy with the shape and I will simply mount it the other way around and we'll see how the hollowing goes.